In this video, I'm going to take a look at the so-called random wire, also known as a long wire. In this particular instance, I've chosen to look at the Moonraker's long wire. Uh, they make three different versions, and we actually, I actually test just the one of them for now. Hi, my name is John. Amateur Radio call sign M7CPT. Welcome to Amateur Radio on the Air. And when I was looking at making one of these long wire antennas, um, I wasn't sure initially about the length. I came across this particular site on hammeruniverse.com where it does actually mention some lengths that are ideal uh, being this set of lengths here but doesn't say what lengths are needed for what bands um, and to be perfectly honest I was a little confused by the site, so what I decided to do was to buy one actually pre-made, even though I could technically make one myself, provided I knew what the length of the wire I needed was. I couldn't work out that site, so... Decided to go for this one from Moonraker. Uh, they describe it as a, a multi-band end-fed long wire antenna. Now, there are three options that you can choose from. You've got the 40 meter one, which I've got set up and I'll be testing. There's one for 80 meters and one for 160 meters. Now, currently out of stock, but keep checking the stock levels. You may find it comes back in. I do have a 160 meter length that I put on this cable reel purely and simply because when I tried to put it on a wire winder I found the wire winder just couldn't take that length of wire at that gauge it's extremely high quality wire and quite a thick gauge. As you can see from the image, the wire casing is transparent. So you can actually see the copper wire inside. And if you scroll down, you can see that they can co cover the range from 6 meters to 160 meters with fairly minor adjustments on your ATU. Well, the part I found interesting, we call it a long wire. The one for the 40 meter band has a length of 10 meters. That's half the length of the end fed half wave. The 80 meter band you find is 20 meters long 
again half the length of a half wave and the same again on the 160 meter band so these are fairly close to being a quarter wave end fed not exactly but close I don't know uh, what the power rating is on this particular antenna and there doesn't seem to be any mention of it on the, the website that I can see uh, one other word of note it does actually mention there is an extra benefit of a ground connection or for an earth rod or a counterpoise if required so some people may get benefit from from using the the earth rod or the counterpoise i'm doing the my current testing without either of them just pure end fed only right first things first it has at this end a nine to one ballon as you can see it's high quality wire and I've placed it just at the same height as the previous antenna now this end you'll notice the cable it's held with cable ties so you can actually adjust the length of it um, for tuning purposes I suppose although it's not plugged for tuning now you'll notice before it goes into the shack where I have a one-to-one -one choke ball on just as it enters the, tr the shack all right as it said the longer version is usable from the 160 meters all the way through to 50 megahertz the uh, six meter band now this the version that i've got up should only be usable from 40 meters through to six meters so let's just run a sweep on that oh okay the 160 meter band is rather high on the SWR so we're not going to get much on that above that the 80 meter band does actually show a usable SWR as you can see where the actual handbands are highlighted It does seem to be a fairly low SWR. In fact, across the whole width of it, it's down below three, with the exception of six meters, which may require an external ATU. I'm going to be using the, the G90, so has a, a wide range ATU so it uh, should cope with it no problems overall as the S for the SWR quite impressive considering it's not supposed to be resonant on any of the bands
does actually look to be in close to resonant, just below the, uh, well, possibly on the 11 meter band. Let's just check. Uh, could be used on the 11 meter band, I, I suppose. But it would require a tuner. So anyone that wants to use a CB with it, sure. Just be sure to uh, use your tuner. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to click the like and subscribe. And now let's get back on with the results. All right, here you can see on the 10 meter band, uh, I'm able to get all the way across to North America and even right down into the far reaches of South America. So much for not being able to do DX on a long wire. And that's just on 10 meters. If we go, go to 12. Again, North America, South America, a couple of contacts in North Africa, just off the coast, 15 meters. At 15 meters, I'm even getting all the way down to Oceania. Heard in China, even heard the north edge of Australia, 17 meters. I'm getting right across the far side of the States. Didn't hear much from the Southern Hemisphere, but it's getting there. 20 meters. Who says you can't do DX on these things? Basically getting heard in all five continents on 20 meters without a problem. 30 meters. Again, still getting heard in Australia and across America. 40 meters. Still getting into America. So it's working the, the nighttime band without a problem. Now then, I said it looked like it might be able to do 80. So I gave it a try anyway. I got heard a little bit in America. But I did get all around Europe with it without a problem. And this is only on 10 watts. The maximum my license allows. I don't mean it's working at roughly one eighth of a wavelength to get there. So it's usable within Europe. But to get out to out of Europe is very difficult on the, the 80 meter band. However, they do do the 80 meter band version that's twice the length. And I would expect similar, uh, similar ranges that I got on 40 from that one. Unfortunately, they wasn't able to get any kind of tune on the 160 band as expected. So, are there any pointers I think you should be aware of for using this kind of antenna? One or two. First of all, make sure you get the unun placed as far away from your shack as possible. Otherwise, it will generate RFI inside your shack. Second of all, 
place a common mode choke at the entry points to your shack to prevent anything coming down the coax to get in into your shack. The reason you don't place the common mode choke at the point of the 9 to 1 on on is it you want to allow it to use the coax as part of the antenna so the coax becomes your counterpoise based on that the rough length that you want for the best results would be one quarter wavelength of the lowest frequency that you wish to use so in this case I only have a 10 meter space available to place it so the 10 meter version gives me full use of the 40 meter through to the 6 meter unfortunately the G90 doesn't have access to the six meters so I can't test it on six meters and from the SWR readings of the nano VNA I would say it would require quite considerable tuning to work there but would be possible before you go don't forget like subscribe all that uh, YouTube stuff that we all like to see you do.